obsessed. We no. are completely obsessed, Neil. Thank you so much, and great to see you. Hello, everyone. I'm Jackie D'Angelo. I'm Taylor Riggs. And I'm Brian Brenberg. Welcome to The Big Money Show. As those affordability issues are very different than what we're seeing in the stock market. So I'm glad yes. that Neil tossed it to us, talking about how we're just a hair away from 40,000. Everyone's looking for that. Right. Because this is something that President Biden and the administration are really touting right now. But I don't want to hear him talking about the stock market, although I know he's going to be. I want to that that's his policy. measure there, because people are struggling, right. guys. The yeah. policies, right? The underlying all of this products, right? Cracker Barrel, another sign they're lowering their forecast because they're saying diners aren't coming into our restaurant. So that's sort of the feel for me overall this week, right, is you have this consumer that is so pressured. If you are wealthy and you're in the stock market, good for you, right? The stock market's rallying on good earnings, maybe a rate. He's saying, let's tax unrealized gains. So you can't have it both ways. Well said. And I, I'd say, you know, whatever you think about Donald Trump, one thing you knew about him, he celebrated this stuff <laughs> all the time. He did. And I'll just add this, um, and I think it's an important point. People feel pressure. President, um, is now, though, the time to be picky when you see overall nearing record highs? Yeah. You know, if I, your conversation was brilliantly put, I mean, across all sides, that we couldn't get otherwise without these productivity increases. Um, and so then on the other side of that, you also have to think about the growth perspective. And so I think mm. there is just a lot of consumer enthusiasm about the growth expectation here versus elsewhere. Mm. Um, and so I do oh. think that's driving a lot of this. It was interesting to see consumer sentiment starting to slip, yeah. but consumer behavior hasn't yet. So it's <laughs> one thing we're observing in the economy is people try their parts of consumer behavior. Tell so my husband about the air maze theme. <laughs> <laughs> I, I want to follow up on that, yeah. what you were saying about consumer sentiment as a reading and how people are actually spending, but this also shift down from the luxury into lesser brands. I mean, at the end of the day, the consumer is two thirds mm -hmm. of the U.S. economy. We need certain things to live. Mm -hmm. We need to refresh our clothes. We need to buy a certain amount of food. Um, we need to keep a uh, uh, shelter roof over our head, right? So Unless you're out of a job, yeah. you're going to spend whatever you have to keep doing that. So to a certain degree, the consumer is going to hold up. It's just not going to be the same consumer. Yeah. And Jackie, to mm. pull it back to an investment thesis, this we lose sight of that when we speak to trends of where to deploy a dollar. The other really interesting thing about housing is and we don't talk about right. prices. Mm. And so, you know, again, that doesn't mean the consumer won't feel incentivized because mentally they'll feel good about a lower interest rate. But there's some themes here that I think have more to the story than maybe mm. we give them at the surface. Surface. Well, housing supply is certainly a big story that we've been following. Right. So, we, hey, Nicole, thanks so much. Thank you. you all. Let's get some light on these big market. Good thing, could it be? Well, here's my thing. So, I think Reddit's got really interesting data. It's good for OpenAI. Yeah. But you've got to ask yourself over time the people who love Reddit, do they go to Reddit for that conversation now or do they go? to open AI, mm -hmm. then they go to other platforms for the data. So I wonder here if Red is doing something good in the short term that's actually going to make it obsolete in the long Interesting. term. Hmm. What do you think, Jackie? I'm sort of hanging back on this, whether you're Microsoft, whether you're NVIDIA, how the AI mm. is functioning, how companies are going to use it. Um, and I think that's still what a lot of people are struggling with, which is what makes it difficult to pick which play you want to be in. Well I have said. to see some of these stories evolve a little bit more, to be honest with you. Well said. We'll continue to follow the Reddit story. Microsoft saying that they will offer right now. This is the problem with the meme rally altogether. I urge people to look at the fundamentals of companies. And if you're not an experienced trader, don't try to, you know, ride these waves. I know a lot of people made money, but people lose big too. I feel like I keep talking about fundamentals and I get burned every time the meme rally comes back, but we can't stress it enough. We love fundamentals on this program. Let's talk about a key Boeing supplier. Counting. Meantime, a lot of people want to retire early. I'm not sure if you know more. Well, I have to tell you, there's a lot of excitement. Jerry, we're, with respect to Social Security, I wish they'd just let me keep the money. I'll invest in the S&P and we'll call it a day. I'll, I'll, then it'll definitely be there. <laughs> I'm on your page, girl. Jerry Willis, yes. thank you so much for that. And this is just to survive, so they'll spend all their disposable income on that and they're not saving, we're going to have trouble when they hit that age. And if security, uh, mm -hmm. Social Security isn't there yeah. to grab them as a safety net as it's supposed to, then they're going to be in more trouble. So you're not going to see the damage that has been done in the last three years, mm -hmm. four years by the time he's done for another decade to come. One is, I like the guy who said, I like to work. Mm -hmm. Retire early. Mm -hmm. I think that's good. But you just have to know that to do that, it's on you. Sure, right? It's not right. on the government. It's not on anybody else. But you put that aspiration together with liking to work.
That's good. That's I American. I like the aspiration wanting to retire early, but a lot of like 60, 7 year old people working, and it's because they love you. If they wanted to retire, they probably could. Probably. And so there's right. something about knowing that you can and that you have that freedom, but wanting to do it for different reasons yeah. versus feeling like you're running on a hamster wheel and you're getting older and you're tired. Yeah. Get off the hamster wheel. <laughs> Get on something a little bit better. All right. The federal government is trying to force... Yeah, and we date. were just talking about GameStop. It used to be the place you'd go buy the games. It right. doesn't yeah. work like that anymore. Nope. It's these developers that are making money off of the concepts that people want, but they're they're buying them and acquiring them in a different way. Yep. Yep. All right, eight TikTokers are today. Thank you so much for laying that out to really get at the heart of the matter for you. So. Appreciate it. In Houston, Texas. Thank you for that though is after the 4th of July, they will slowly, slowly start to come down. So people who are going to hang on gas prices where they are now or where they're going to be by July 4th mm. as an election issue are going to see the tide potentially turn mm. just for seasonality, barring any kind of a geopolitical conflict or, or another issue when it comes to, to oil prices. So we'll see how it all shakes and out. And we heard from the airlines, they're even looking at peak uh, record demand, obviously jet fuel different from gas at the pump, but sort of that overall summer demand really Absolutely. starting to heat you up. You guys are so. depressing me on a Friday. I want cheap travel. Is there any hope for any cheap travel in I America? Don't anyway, think it was good. if I walk, is it cheap if I walk, walk. or is that expensive too? Okay, I guess I got to walk. Walking is free. All right. Biking is free. You know what is not free? The NASCAR Cup Series. It is coming to North Carolina this Sunday and it is driving, get it, some serious bucks. We'll hear from businesses in the area who are calling this their Super Bowl. All right. Madison, I would hold off on that moonshine until the end of the day, but <laughs> yeah, <laughs> thank you for that. Good stuff. Madison and moonshine. All right. You're right. Tied for fourth on the leaderboard. He's competing Correct. for $20 million. This is pretty impressive, Taylor. So impressive. I mean, Jackie, you're our golfer on this set. I've heard it takes an immense amount of concentration, a wild morning from the 7.30 a.m. arrest to getting out and getting there around 9, and then they're all starting to play around 10. Incredible. In commercial breaks, I'm looking at the scoreboard, so now you guys I know what be I'll be it. doing. I knew you'd be on it. <laughs> um, let's talk about a really optimistic story. This is one of my do that to your mom. Yeah, that's not. But it. it's amazing what this has been able to do for his life. I just add really quickly, this is the power story of things like this that would be to any other generation magic. And it's totally. actually happening now. American companies can do this. Well, this is AI at its best, and this is what you want to see it be used for, for like the companies that he's mm. typically behind. But it's a really heartwarming, touching story. This is giving people their lives back. Right. So when we deal with some of the dark sides of AI, um, the mimicking and the, you know, the calls yeah. and all these different things that we've seen so far, you hear a story like this and you say it's worth it. But it also reminds us that there are two pieces to this puzzle. And somehow, whether it's through the companies or the government, there's going to have to be some way to regulate how far this yeah. can go because even the good side, this story shows you how much power right. there is in it. Good. All right, we've got brand new Fox Poll. More time, more money. More taxpayer dollars. There's yeah. the story. Grady <laughs> Trimble, good to see you. Thanks for being with us. All right, Joe's like medicine because, you know, you yeah. kind of need your doctors to be good at what they do, not sensitive to the political winds of the moment. Congressman, Amen. we got to leave it there. Thanks for being with us. All right, guys. Great. Have a great weekend. 5% wow. nationwide. It is pretty incredible. And I think, Brian, you've talked a lot on this program about regulation. I mm. wanted to get your thoughts on this. States that have the highest price of child care as a percent of median income. Right. It's California, New York, Oregon, Washington, Massachusetts, and Vermont. I'm seeing a lot of coastal blue states, and I don't know what to make of it. Well, and they're telling you things like how many caregivers mm. provide that service, and they're going to charge a higher fee. Look, if you want to really expand this market, you've got to let parents do more of that work and have less of the government telling every single caregiver mm. what they got to do for your kid.
but the government likes to tell everybody what they have to do for themselves and their children. The biggest problem that I have with this here is by design at the southern border is to bring more people in and, and create a shift in our actual population that you will see play out over time. Well, there's been a lot of studies about globally birth rates are only having one or two instead of maybe three or four if you're fiscally responsible because you're looking at these costs and saying, I can't I do, it? do it. You, you know what this is a good argument for? Getting inflation under control. Right. Well, maybe said. if we did that, it would help a little bit with things, you know, like child care. Well, let's get back to these markets. One more minute until 2 p.m. memes. He's making a comeback. He's shorting GameStop again. That's brave. That's extremely brave. I was going to say, I wonder if the momentum will be the same as short sellers are, you know, have exited the market. That short squeeze is what took those stock prices up. It was partially people buying and momentum to take it up, too. But if somebody like that is saying, I'm getting back in, I mean, <laughs> yeah. he's got a lot of conviction and he's got a lot of money to back him up. Why also. is he asking for it? Why is he getting in and asking for it? Is that really what he's doing? Is he really shorting or is he getting in and saying that? But he's actually going long, and he's no. got the last laugh. No, if you say you're short, you're short. You're I don't. Yeah, long. I don't. I don't think he directly mislead the market <laughs> like that. But yeah. even still, oh. we've. I've kept my eye on that box. I'm even wearing a green dress today, waiting for oh, forty thousand. No. We were not able. Taylor, maybe you were red, and you. Just, oh, it was my fault. <laughs> and negated the effect. Um, but maybe it'll happen during Charles Payne's hour. We'll send it over. I'm with Brian on this one. I kind of believe Brian yes. might be on something. You think? Uh, yes. All I can say, I don't know. I'm a conspiracy theorist by heart. <laughs> Thank you. All right, see you guys.